sure to please silence your cell phones, no flash photography and no live video streaming. Again, uh, we'll have coach give an opening statement, but then we'll ask questions just to the student athletes and before dismissing them, make sure to state your name and affiliation. If you're on Zoom, uh, please raise your hand. We'll try to get you in as well. But first off, uh, this will be Miami's first ever Elite Eight coach. Congratulations. <laughs> give an you. opening statement, please. Yeah, well, um, first of all, I've never done this in my career. I apologize to Denise in the hallway because I was so excited I forgot to shake their hands, and that's just not my style. So that's the first thing I wanted to say. Um, they are an awesome program. Um, very, very difficult team to defend, obviously. They did a great job surprising us with that pressure. Um, we were in some foul trouble, so they picked a good time to do it. But all the credit in the world to them. And, I mean, Maddie is everything she's been advertised. And we really pride ourselves on our defense. And, you know, the uh, uh, only thing I can kind of brag about is it took 29 shots for her to get 31 points. And I think at the end um, she missed some shots that, uh, you know, she normally doesn't, but maybe it's maybe it's something to do with that we wore her down a little bit. But uh, I we had some some really special performances. But Jazz Roberts, um, you know, that's 26 points on 16 shots. That is Cool Hand Luke is her new nickname. Okay, um, she doesn't even know that movie, but that's her Cool Hand Luke, and her efficiency numbers are incredible. And when the team is like. Feed Jazz, let her eat. She's beasting. She's bullying. She's the, I mean, the whole team was on the Jazz train, and that's what's special about our team is we'll find a matchup. Destiny was a great matchup for us, too, 15-9, um, 26-9. Great matchup. And then, you know, we, we, went to, we were in a lot of foul trouble in that second half. We got a big lead, you know, seven minutes, seven minutes left in the third. They're already in a bonus, something like that. Completely changed the game for us. And we had a lot of foul trouble. And... It was uh, very much um, a lot of decisions and a lot of choices, but our bench held, and uh, particularly I thought Lachey Dwyer was special um, off the bench for us, and um, that might have been the difference for us. So uh, when the starters got back in, we, we know how to close out a game, and I'm really proud, and uh, I can't believe it. I mean, I'm not going to act cool. Like, this is awesome. Um, you know, they asked me yesterday, somebody asked me, was that Indiana win the biggest of your career? And I just wouldn't answer the question because I just thought, no, because Est is kind of final, Est. And I, we still had another big win ahead of us. And so this is, I'm not going to say this is the biggest win in our career either. I'm just not, right? We're going to keep, we're going to keep pushing. We're going to keep plugging. And we're going to keep preparing to win. I'm going to open it up for questions of student athletes, starting with Andrea. Uh, for both players, at the end of the game, when it's tight, you've had that big lead, now it's close. What allowed you guys to be able to make the plays to be able to pull this game out? I think uh, it's just going back to what we do in practice all the time. You know, all those plays we run a thousand times in practice, and uh, we, we, we trust each other a lot, you know. And um, for us to, you know, execute those plays is big time for us, especially uh, having the starters out there. So. Um, we know executing the plays is going to get us uh, the big win today. Down here on the right. Yeah, uh, Mitch North, I'm filling in for the Miami Herald. Um, Destiny, there's that moment, it's 38 seconds left, Jazz hits that bucket, and she's fouled, and she's on her back, and you and Haley are kind of in her face, you know, slapping her on the chest. What's, what's that moment like? What kind of confidence are you feeding her? I mean, I've been giving Jazz confidence since the season started. Uh, I call her my twin because I feel like we got a similar game, and I've been in her head since the season started. I see so much potential in her. So um, continue to make her uh, confident is what was going to continue to make us um, go further. In a, but at the moment, it was just like you won a game for us right there. Like once you hit the free throw, you could still a game for us. And for her to be such, so young and a sophomore, it's just like you here right now. So take advantage of it. And um, I mean, yeah. I'm proud of her, so. Right here. <laughs> For both players, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. End of the third, beginning of the fourth, I think they went on something like a 23-2 and two run. What are the conversations at that point between the players specifically about maintaining your cool, keeping your composure, and trying to sort of quell that run? Yeah. Um, I mean, on the court, we still continue to huddle. You know, we did kind of – lose our composure for a little bit and a lot of them are going to run but we still would huddle as a team and just talk to each other and say hey like we're still winning like we just need to stay together like handle the press and ultimately like we did um it got better after that so like we were in some foul trouble which um was smarter than the press but we still remained you know together as a team 
Any more questions for the student athletes back here on the right? Destiny, you had the assignment sometimes of guarding Maddie Segrist. Um, what, what were the challenges and what worked for you all? Uh, I, I respect her game. So we knew that she was going to come out and score. I mean, she scored 20 plus points in, I think, 32 games. So we knew that we tried to at least try to, you know, stop it. But stopping somebody like that is almost impossible. You know, you got to kind of respect her game. But uh, we always say if she scores and we win, then it, it don't matter, uh, you know, how much she scores. Uh, but you do have to respect a uh, player like that. You know? Athletic? Destiny, you guys played in a really tough league, obviously, this season. But at this point, you guys are peaking. You seem to have caught this momentum. What is it like to be playing with this kind of momentum behind you right now at this time in the year? It feels great because, I mean, now we're the only eight teams in the country playing right now. And uh, we're going to continue to stay humble and blessed and uh, take uh, advantage of this opportunity, you know, stay together um, and just enjoy these moments because this is my last year with, you know, this team and these group of young ladies. So uh, just enjoying the moment and staying together, remaining humble and, you know, continue to try to get some more wins. Andrew? Uh, for Jasmine, obviously the bucket and the foul was huge at the end of the game. Can you just describe what you were feeling, what you were seeing as that play was happening as the first part? And the second part, you made history for Miami getting to the Elite Eight for the first yeah. time. How does that feel? Um, it feels amazing. I mean, like, when I – I just always crash the boards, like, offensive or defensive rebounding. So, I saw the shot go up, and I'm like, all right, like, I need to get this ball. And so, um, I put it back up and, like, getting a foul, and it felt great. And, like, at the free throw line, honestly, I was just telling myself, like, these are the biggest free throws of your life. Like, you got to hit these. Like, you work – I put a lot of work, and I practiced my free throws. So, like, it was just – I had to, like, tell myself good things, like, positive things in my head. And it worked out. And then when the game was just crazy, like, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm <sick. laughs> Any other questions for our student athletes? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. You got it? Yeah. <sighs> All right, starting questions for Coach, starting with Aaron over here on the right. Aaron Beard with the AP. Yeah. Katie, you were, your players were just talking a little bit about composure, that, you know, it's a hard situation to be in the where, where it was at the end of the game. Kind of what does it say about them that you can kind of take that punch and wobble and still come out on top? Usually teams don't hold on after they blow a big lead like that. I know. it, And, um, you know, we had some really just surprising fumbles and layups at the rim. It wasn't like – it didn't feel – as if like, oh my God, what, it was like, wow, this is shocking. And then one time I just put my hand up and I had to laugh. I'm like, wow, like we did it, called a timeout, run a certain press break to get Des a layup. She has a layup. And it was like, and that didn't even go in. So it got a little bit panicky for sure. Um, and, um, but a lot of it also, if you think about it, like we go up 20, I believe, when Carla Arievets hits a three with like five minutes to go. And, and we're nuts. And then from that point on, um, we couldn't have our starters back in for a while. It was, it was frustrating for us. And, um, you know, Villanova did some wonderful coaching. So I got to give them a ton of credit for that. And, you know, we've learned we beat other teams when, when they have the lead on us. We know, you know, it, it's, a lot, it, it's kind of fun and freeing to, 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 to charge back and try to come from behind. So we've been on both sides of it in the last week. <laughs> um, but if it's a close game, you know, we feel like we're going to win. Andrew? Katie, you were very emotional uh, after the game. Yeah. Considering everything you and this program have gone through this season mm -hmm. and where you are right now to make it to an Elite Eight for the first time, I was wondering right. if you could put words to the emotions you were feeling right as the game ended. Um, I, I just am so grateful for um, the toughness you know, I'm so grateful for – they're really super women. I mean, my team, they're, they're, they're good-hearted, honorable women. They are wonderful people. Um, but if you try to come after us, we're going to rise up, you know. And, and maybe that came from some of this. And if that's the case, then they have my back, so good for them. And let's go because we got a spine. I keep saying it. We got a spine, and I'm grateful to them. Um, I have their backs. They have my back. And we, we feel um, like we deserve this. So, and we don't, we are, and I told him in the locker room, you are not going to apologize for blowing a whatever lead, whatever the lead was, because you earned that lead 
And don't you dare apologize. And don't you put, let anyone put something in your head about, oh, blah, blah, blah. No, -uh, no, we're in the Elite Eight. You got to be crazy if you think we're going to doubt ourselves. That's not going to happen. So maybe that's the spine they have too. Down here on the right. Yeah, Katie, there was moments in the game, especially during that run where you built that big lead where you all just looked bigger and faster and stronger than Villanova. Mm -hmm. um, was that just a matter of effort and aggressiveness? Um, yes, I think the, um, the versatility of these two, you know, and I've always said when you watch if we have big wins, one of them plays well. And I said the day that both of them play well, you know, we're going to be – because they're great matchups for me, right? Their shot charts are very versatile. Um, we absolutely were trying to um, run Maddie off – that treat her like a pinball, like, you know, make her chase you, screen her. I mean, because I have so much respect for her. But we absolutely were trying to exhaust her on the defensive end with some of those play calls. And they were working out for us, and we were on the, on the balls of our feet. And um, that was and, – and, and, and we could – and they started switching, and we still had – we had two of them out there, right? So I think that helped a lot. But I, I, like I said, um, uh, defensively, when we need to stop, you know, Lola Pendande is going to – her fourth quarter defense is as good as you've ever seen. And um, she did it again for us too. Athletic? Hey, Katie, Chantel Jennings with The Athletic. The two weeks, basically, between the end of the ACC yeah. tournament and the start of the NCAA tournament, what happened within those two <laughs> weeks to sort of flush that and create this momentum? That's such a great question. Um, it's a total credit to our league that we got so sloppy. Uh, we lost our identity. Um, it's when – you are just grinding possession by possession by possession for two months, right? These close games, we've been in them for two months against great teams with big-time basketball players that can score a bucket without – even if you don't make a mistake, right? We lost our identity a little bit. Um, I usually don't like that there's that much time, but this particular team, they're eager. They want to learn, and when they're wrong, they don't get embarrassed. Right? We just kind of say, what did I do wrong? And like, help me make sure that doesn't happen to me again. And we had a lot of time to show what we had been doing wrong, not in an attacking way, but like, you know, the smartest person in the room isn't the person who knows everything, it's the person who's learning. And as long as they got open hearts and open minds and they're trying to learn and we're trying to teach, um, that's where our strength comes from. And they were great during those two weeks. Final three questions. Go in the back first, and we'll go here, and then to Aaron if the last one. Congrats again on the big win, Coach. Um, you, you talked a little bit about Villanova's press kind of caught you by surprise. I'm wondering if there's other things that went on during that run that you think contributed to it, and if, you know, you as a staff could go back and redo that, you know, stretch. Yeah, you know what happened? We were shy, and we were drifting down the court instead of cutting down the court. Um, and, uh, you know, so we won. So apparently the decisions were okay, but that was tough. The three fouls early in the third with your players that really mean a lot to your program, that calm you down, that are your captains, that are your veterans. Um, that was really difficult. And, and they had a lot of size, so they sort of locked us a little bit. And there was opportunity there. But it's very hard to say, hey, you're up 20, you know, go. You know, we hesitated. And that's what happens. Like, leads are hard to protect against great teams. And they're hard to protect against not great teams. They're hard. And we were protecting instead of staying, staying forward. And um, that's a credit to them. They, that was good coaching, like I said. And there's going to be great players and great coaching in the tournament, right? I mean, I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm, I'm, Villanova's great. And uh, we were just like, whatever, one or two points better today. Chantel? Katie, a follow-up to my earlier question. I guess yeah. when you're in the middle of that slog where it's like possession by possession, you're grinding it out in the right. ACC. Did you have moments, or how often did you sort of look at this team and say, if everything clicks, we could be pretty special? Well, yeah, I did. But it wasn't really happening like night after night. We weren't consistent, you know. But there was that pop-up surprise player, which gave you so much faith. Like Jazz did this to Virginia Tech, right? Uh, she did it to North Carolina when Des was out, too. Um, but the pop-up surprise player, like – Kyla Oldacre is going to be a star. Lazaria Spearman is going to be a star. You know, today they were a little bit like freshmen, but they were in a tough spot. But, like, the pop-up players, the Shea Dwyer, you know, scoring 17 in the ACC tournament. So we had those moments, but it didn't all, like, come and, like, okay, the who, the what, the where, the why, and the when wasn't all there. It's, it's – today it was there. I mean, for 25 minutes, we were pretty dialed in. Final question to Aaron. 
I did want to ask you one part of your celebration. You came over to the crowd and gave two thumbs up, and then it looked like you were playing a guitar, maybe an air guitar, or kind of did like this. I don't know. I couldn't tell. (laughs) That is not me. (laughs) I wanted. I was just curious Ah. if there was a significance to the gesture. (laughs) Oh gosh, no. I think I was just pump, pump. I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I wasn't just emotional today. Like that's who I am, right? And um, one of the greatest things um, in moments like this is if your colleagues are happy for you, all right? If you're, of course your family's happy for you. My mom's here, my wife is here. Um, But when your colleagues are like, you know, tweeting and texting you, you know, things you can't even repeat in a press conference because they're so darn happy Mm -hmm. for you, that's where you feel like, okay, you know, and we had a bunch of ex-players in the stands. They did a whole video today about eight minutes in our pregame meal of alumni that have just reminded this team like that you know people that the kids are like who's that I'm like okay that's so and so she played in 19 but it's caught me by surprise but it was very emotional but it was like um pouring in and being proud of you but like happy for your success is the highest compliment you can get and I feel like this team has got a lot of people happy for us congratulations we'll see you this weekend thank you